All right, guys, so as I said, these come courtesy of themighty.com. And the very first thing, actually, that's important I'd like to mention is at the start of their article, um, they say that we shouldn't shy away from asking a loved one if they feel suicidal because it's a myth that it will actually put the idea in their head. So here are some things that people have actually said, questions that they wish they'd been asked when they were feeling suicidal. The first one is, do you want to hang out? So um, Kira M says, often at my worst times, I felt, I've always felt I isolated and alone. It hasn't been until this year that people really started taking note and inviting me out when I started to feel isolated. Michelle M, this is what she says, a question that she would have loved someone to ask her is, can I lie here with you? So she says, I didn't need more words. My head had enough of those. I did need a hug to know that yes, I did exist to someone. So very important there. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is actually a question that probably we would never think of asking this kind of question because you might think, oh, if I ask this question, it's gonna put ideas in the person's head and it's gonna make them feel worse. And the question is, what's the worst thing you're thinking or feeling right now? And this is someone called Elizabeth that said this. And she says, when I feel really badly, I feel obligated to hide it from people. It will be such a relief to know I'm allowed to say the worst of it out loud to someone. So again, I think this is also about um, breaking that stigma because you, you kind of feel when you are feeling suicidal or depressed you kind of think I can't talk about this thing because it's really depressing it's going to scare people but actually being given the permission to express yourself I think you know that one just hits it on the head definitely another question um, that someone had wished they'd been asked and this one is Mika Michaela she says I wish they would just straight up and ask me if I was suicidal. So she said, I always get questions like, how are you doing? Are you okay? Any bad thoughts? You having a good or bad day? And so many other ones that seem to avoid the word suicide. So when these people avoid saying suicide or asking if I'm feeling suicidal, I feel like they don't want to know how I'm really feeling. And I, I, to be honest, I think these points are precious because um, it, it just gives some insight into what people actually feel when they're, when they're like that and giving us permission to actually ask certain questions. I think they're really good. Um, I'm probably not going to cover all of them because we're running out of time, guys, but I'm going to just cover a few more. Another one, again, is just a simple gesture. This is Gina R and she says, a question she wish she would have been asked is, can I hold your hand? So she says, I think it's important to be able to sit with someone who's suicidal and not look for a Band-Aid. Just sit with them without judgment and let them feel someone just be there. And that's very true. Sometimes you don't want to talk about what's bothering you. You don't want to go into details. So There's some people that like to express themselves, other people that would just, don't, they don't want to talk about it because it makes them feel worse, maybe in that particular moment. But just having someone there next to them makes them feel better, makes them feel like they're not alone. Another one is, uh, why? Just a simple why. A simple question I've never been asked in an honestly interested way. No judgment, no clumsy try to make my issues seem less important than I felt they were. Asking why with the true intent of understanding and maybe even forgiving me. Caring for me without getting to hate me for my thoughts. That's what I'd have needed. What I still sometimes need. I think I've got time to cover one more. This one is more of a practical one. People used to hear I'm suicidal and back off apologizing and disappearing until I was better. The help I needed wouldn't have been huge. A text or a visit to my house when I was anxious to go out, a tag in a silly meme, but unless they asked, how can I help? I was never going to tell them any of that. So you see, I mean, it goes back to what Nihara was saying earlier about just small gestures, small things um, can make a huge difference. And I think sometimes people are afraid of kind of um, approaching someone or offering some of that help because they think it's going to be overwhelming it's going to take up too much of their time and it doesn't it doesn't just something small will really help and can make a world of difference so those are just a few of the things that um, I wanted to share with you I think it was it gives quite a good insight to how people feel and just to say as well um, I, I was never actually even though I went through many uh, mental health issues I was never actually suicidal and I think the only reason I wasn't suicidal was because I had a phobia of death so in a sense I was kind of trapped but I was I would say I was trapped in a good way because it, it that that thought didn't occur to me because I was so terrified of death so obviously you know uh, it, uh, it was something that I wouldn't I wouldn't do but um, 
what I do remember is that there was always, always this tiny little voice inside of me, deep inside, and it was just a little voice of hope. And I remember sometimes that voice was so quiet. It was tiny, it was, you know, it was so, so tiny compared to the other emotions and things that I was feeling when I was depressed and having panic attacks and feeling dark and all, all those horrible feelings that I was having, but I still had this tiny little bit of hope. And I think actually that that tiny bit of hope is in everyone somewhere. And that's what you've got to try and focus on. And remember that, you know, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it seems like the tunnel is really, really dark and you can't see the end of it, but you just have to keep walking. You just have to keep going forward because you will see that light and you can you can go towards it because it's there. So um, just hold on to that hope, never give up because life is definitely worth living.